Hey y'all, thanks for joining us. Um, Stan and I have been asked by many of you um, for an update video in regards to how Isabel is doing since she's been home over the past 15 months. And so I want to stop right here. If you haven't had a chance to watch Isabel's adoption journey video that we made last year, um, Stan is going to post a link below. And so you need to go watch that and, um, and catch you up to date to where we are now. And so this may get a little long-winded. We're going to try to keep it as short as possible, but also to be able to give you enough information on um, what all of our friends want to know about about Isabel, right? Right. Okay. Aha. So we had a huge, huge gathering at the airport. Um, lots of friends and family came out to support us, and it was really a special time. Um, everyone got to hold Isabel and love on her, and she was pretty calm through it all. When we brought her home, she was five and a half years old. She weighed 19 pounds. She was very malnourished. Um, she had, from what we knew, she's never crawled. She has never walked. She's never spoken. She appeared to be significantly hearing impaired or deaf. Um, so she had a lot of challenges that came with her that we were, a lot we knew about, but I don't think you can ever prepare yourself. Yeah, so she's like a little infant. And she just needed a lot of love and care. We did know that she was blind. Uh, we also know that there was some neurological issues there. So luckily we have a great neurologist or a pediatric neurologist here in town. Uh, and that's who we took her to. One of the first things he did was uh, we had an MRI of her brain uh, to kind of find out what was going on. Uh, when we did get those results back, uh, we finally found out she had a uh, rare neurological condition called basal encephalocele. And what this is, it's a uh, rare congenital uh, malformation of the brain where uh, a sac uh, of brain tissue which begins to grow through the optic chasm and the sinus cavity in her condition because it, it was there in the midline of the brain. Basal encephalocele is very rare. Uh, it occurs in less than 100 births in the United States every year. Uh, so this is not something that any neurologist, even a pediatric neurologist, is going to have a lot of um, experience with. It. We did then go to a uh, uh, pediatric neurosurgeon. He believed that Isabel will live with us uh, the rest of her days. In subsequent appointments that we had with him, he pretty much felt bad that there was really nothing he could do for her. I, I think he had the idea that we were getting screwed over, that somehow we had really went to China to adopt a child who had no medical conditions and this is what we came home with. Uh, when we began to explain to him that we knew exactly what we were getting into and that uh, we knew she wasn't going to live a, a long life like the rest of us. Uh, I think he began to accept more that we we knew what we were doing. And I think these doctors too, because he was one as well as a few others, um, I think a lot of special needs parents or parents in general who come to a doctor uh, with a child who, who is facing struggles, medical mm -hmm. struggles, you come to that doctor because you're needing answers and you're needing their professional wisdom and knowledge to, to help your child. And for us, we went to him, and I think that this is what threw him for a loop, is that we weren't looking for him to fix her, and we didn't go adopt her so that we could bring her home and fix her. We brought her home because she's worthy of being loved and taken care of. And so for him, I think it almost took a load off his back to see that we weren't looking to him to be her savior, and to make everything right in our world and her world. But we just wanted our little Isabel to be able to be the best best Isabel she can be. There were several behaviors that she was displaying uh, that tended to mimic uh, those that are on the autism spectrum. Um, so we knew that that was possibly a possibility. 
because she was having stimming issues. And many of y'all, many have asked what is stimming, and it's self-regulated behaviors. And so you can think of some of these orphans like Isabel, who were left alone in a baby bed for years and years with no stimulation um, because the nannies didn't know how to handle her. Um, a lot of these orphans will find ways to, to stimulate, to soothe themselves. It can come in head rocking, um, you know, pinching at themselves. Well, Isabel bit her hands and that was our main problem, main challenge to solve and to help her overcome whenever we first came home. So that is what we say when we say stimming behaviors. Um, hers is biting and hers is hitting right now. And, it, and it's really rough emotionally for parents when they've never dealt anything, you know, dealt with anything like this and, and they don't have answers. So we were just trying to do anything we could. Uh, initially it was just holding her arms. Uh, but as you know, anybody that's dealt with this, you can't hold your children 24 hours. Uh, you have to be able to come up with some other kind of answers. And so we, but I did find some uh, adult uh, wrist braces that were too big for her, but I thought, you know, we could put these on uh, and it would cover her forearms. And maybe she could bite on these instead of actually biting on her arm. So brought them home, and I think that for the first hour she didn't really like them. Yeah. Uh, but then all of a sudden uh, we have video where she just, she came alive. coated with calcium buildup or tartar however you want to say it um, and we thought maybe that some of the hitting because she was hitting along with the biting in China we thought maybe she had some some pain in her mouth from the lack of dental care so we quickly got her to a pediatric dentist um, obviously he couldn't sit her in a chair and work on her like he would any normal child so essentially he sat for an hour and a half with her in my lap and he just went around to each tooth and picked off the insane amount of, of tartar that had built up on her teeth. And so another issue that we, or another challenge that we had when we brought her home is she, she didn't like all the, um, the touch that we were giving her because she was used, her, her norm was to be in a baby bed left alone. And so for, for us to hold her a whole lot, she didn't, she didn't care for, which was hard because obviously big brothers and big sisters wanted to snuggle and cuddle her and we did too as well but you really just have to look at what what the child needs and kind of put what your desires on hold so she slept in a playpen a lot i had a baby carrier that she did love to be in i'm gonna make her laugh this time <laughs> go easy <laughs> <laughs> Let her go. I think it was just enough security for her, and she liked being near us on some level, but we kind of needed our hands off of her. And so she loved being in the baby carrier, and all of the older kids were great about um, carrying her around the house and just slowly getting her used to being touched and held. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh my goodness, there she goes. <gasps> my gosh. <laughs> Look at her little tongue. Are you happy? You got whiplash learn to take the small things in life and appreciate them much more yes I'm apparently gonna be the crybaby of this video that's okay and I'm glad that it won't be me this time <laughs> um, so yeah so we have we have learned to enjoy every single giggle that she gives every single every little thing that you kind of take for granted with your maybe your biological kids um, we learn to appreciate them with Isabel
We also got in touch with another optometrist who specializes in um, making prosthetic eyeballs for um, kids and adults. And so we took Isabel to see him um, and um, we started the eye conformer process, which essentially is a little plastic piece that you're going to put um, in her socket to sh expand it, to help that socket expand so that it can be ready for an artificial eyeball. We did the eye conformer for several days. Stan would put it in and I would turn my head and hold her down and she actually tolerated it very well. Yes, she did. But our problem was um, because of her hitting and she likes to put her fingers in her eyes, um, it's just very hard to manage her from, from knocking the eye conformer out of her eye. And so we pretty much just decided that we're gonna put the eye conformer on hold for a little while until we can manage some of these um, more difficult challenges. Whenever we brought Isabel home, or even in China, it appeared that um, her response to sound was very minimum. I honestly, actually everyone honestly, thought that she was deaf. So we had her um, an ABR testing, which is an extensive hearing test, and it showed immediately that her hearing was textbook perfect. Even the audiologist was in awe. And she had pretty much already determined that Isabel was deaf. And she, we were already talking about cochlear implants and all those things. Uh, within 10 seconds of starting the testing, her eyes just popped open and she was like, her hearing is perfect. The also another appointment on our agenda was a pediatric endocrinologist. Um, because we knew that Isabel didn't have a pituitary gland yeah. and had the pediatric endocrinologist um, is is really fantastic. Um, I truly love her. She's also Mika Ella's um, endocrinologist that's really been helpful with her. Um, so because Isabel does not have a pituitary gland, what most likely is going to happen is, well, her body's not producing growth, growth hormones. And so um, since we brought her home, she has gained eight to nine pounds. So she is now about 26 to 27 pounds, which is wonderful. And she has grown, I think about four inches. Um, but she has kind of stalled out at that. And our other little girl that we adopted from the Philippines, that was kind of her story too, is um, she kind of stalled out at, at 26 pounds and about the same size as Isabel is because her pituitary gland is underdeveloped and she is taking growth hormones. So we feel like that's where Isabel is going to be too, is she's going to need growth hormones in the future. But again, we're not rushing uh, it. That's when we um, uh, took her to Shriners Hospital uh, because we knew that, that something wasn't right in her hips because when she get really frustrated and angry, uh, she would, I mean, she could control and she would begin popping her hips. And so we took her to Shriners Hospital uh, they were wonderful with her, uh, and they found that she had what you call bilateral hip dysplasia. And so what that is, is uh, the femurs and the hips uh, are not joined together, or if they are, it's a very shallow socket. So they actually had to do surgery on Isabel. Um, it's a pretty, pretty intense surgery. Uh, they actually have to deepen the, the sockets there um, in the hips. Uh, and she also had uh, bone grafts, and then they also had to give her a blood transfusion because there had been so much bleeding during the surgery on her hips. Uh, but they uh, actually put her in what you call a spica cast, which uh, it is a cast. It's usually from uh, about the chest down. Uh, they, they cut out the front of it, though, uh, to give her a little more breathing room. Uh, but it's it's for six weeks that she has this cast on. I mean, there's really no movement, and this really caused her to regress and go from the happy little crawling girl to playing with toys to where really she just wanted she regressed back to that point where she just wanted to be left alone and lay there. Um, yeah. So we had worked really hard because we had that surgery in February of this year. So me, Isabel had been home for what I don't know six months or something. And she was making so much progress, but we knew that, and let me tell you, like I said earlier, watching this little girl do all the little things that other kids can do, um, it just, it's, it's the best thing ever to sit and watch her actually get up on all fours and actually be able to stand up and entertain a little toy and lick it to death because that's how she explores and plays with things. 
And so we knew that this big surgery was just going to set her back, but it was a surgery that had to happen. There was no good time to do it, but um, but we knew that she she needed the surgery. So Isabel turned six years old on February 2nd, and so we, of course, had a big birthday bash here at the house uh, with just family and close friends um, because I'm sure that was the first time anyone had ever sang happy birthday to her or celebrated who she was. And so it was really fun um, just to have friends and family over who really loved and cared for her. Um, at that time, she was addicted to a pacifier, and so we would try to put icing on a pacifier, and she, of course, didn't like it. That's going to work. This isn't her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Is she like here? No, Grace. No, Grace. Put some of that on her past. I just did. Oh, what'd she say? Oh, <gasps> 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 <laughs> what do you think? Um, and she didn't understand what was really going on, but for us, you know, it was a big thing to celebrate her because she's worth being celebrated. So one thing about Isabel is she knows what she wants and how she wants it. Everything here is gone. There's nothing to Chicago? There's nothing to Chicago, New York, Nashville, you name it. Everything's gone. What about a private place? You know, I'm sorry we don't do that. The only thing they have is a booking for all of us on Friday. She is an all or nothing kind of girl. She has extremes. Um, and I think I think it's common to find that a lot of these orphans who have just kind of had to fight through their survival for so many years, um, they're fighters and, and, and they're very, um, they have very strong wills. And so um, Isabel has gone through many seasons of extremes. And so um, when we brought her home, in addition to the hitting and the biting, she would also bite her lips. And I'm sure you can see in some of the pictures that um, the bottom of her little lip is, is kind of damaged and a lot of scar tissue and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so we tried to pacify her many, many times and she would not have nothing to do with it. And then all of a sudden she decided she loved it. But she didn't love it the normal way, not like a normal, she, she's an Izzy. Um, we call them izzy isms. <laughs> but she would take the pacifier and turn it sideways and want it sideways in her mouth. And again, I think it because it offered her pressure. She loves anything, just many sensory issues. So anything that can give her extra pressure, she thrives on. Okay. Hey, pretty girl. Yeah. <laughs> and so she was very addicted to that pacifier. And if you took it out of her mouth, other than feeding her a bottle, she would scream. And yeah. I know that we went out in public and people looked at us and looked at her like we were crazy. And do you know that that pacifier is in the wrong way? But... We welcome the stares and the looks and the questions. It doesn't bother us. Um, so, and then with, as quickly as I can flip a light switch, she decided she didn't like the passy after about a month or a month and a half. Um, her braces um, that kept her from hitting and biting, she, she, went, she goes through periods where she demands that they be on. She needs that pressure, that security. Um, and then there are other times she'll wake up the next day or whatever and she'll decide I don't really need them and I'm perfectly fine without them.
She goes through many different, I mean, just as any infant would do, she goes through many seasons of, of progressing and learning new things and deciding what she likes or what she doesn't like and what she needs for comfort or, or what have you. And once you kind of think you have her figured out, she goes and she changes it all. And, you know, how she sat, too. Yes. There were many times we'd go out to restaurants and put her in a high chair, and she could not sit the regular way. She would have to pull up her legs and, and prop her legs up in the okay. air, yeah, yeah uh, up on the table while you're eating, or sometimes put her feet in your, <laughs> in in your, your plate. Uh, other times we'd stick her in her little bouncy seat, and she just would find all kind of weird ways. Sometimes you're looking at her thinking, that can't be very comfortable, but Izzy loved it. So years ago, when Stan and I were getting ready to move, we've lived in this house for almost six years, I think, right? Six mm -hmm. years. One of the things that I really prayed for was that God would give us a house that had a swimming pool in it. Um, of course, this was when I, um, we only had four biological children. We didn't know that we were going to be adopting or anything of that. But that was one thing that I was determined um, and really prayed for and believing that God would give me a house with this give us a house with a swimming pool Stan thought it was ridiculous. You know, there's no way we're gonna find a house with with a swimming pool and all the bedrooms that we need and of course God provided it Well, and I did I did agree that I didn't think it was within our prize range because we needed four bedrooms And she wanted an in-ground swimming pool and I just didn't think it would be in our prize range but also <laughs> When she'd say she was praying for it. I'm like you know, God's not really concerned whether we have an in-ground pool. And and at times, I think that's probably true. But at the time that this was all going on, uh, I think God could look forward and see that we were actually not only uh, going to enjoy the pool ourselves, but uh, the pool was going to play an instrumental part in, in Izzy's therapy. And we didn't even know yet we were going to adopt her. Yeah, so it's really neat to look back at how God has really worked and provided along the way even when you 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 don't even know what he's doing or you don't even realize that he is even doing anything and so in china um stan put her in the little hot tub for the first time <laughs> She absolutely loved it. She absolutely loved a bathtub. And again, it's one of those little things that I got all teary-eyed when I first saw her splashing in the water because it's probably one of her first. At least it's a first with us. And she absolutely loved the water. And so we knew that that swimming pool was going to be really therapeutic for her. And so she would spend hours, like two to three hours at a time in the swimming pool. So in June, our oldest son, Addison, who was 18 years old at the time, um, he, he got married to his bride, Rainy. And so they had been dating for a few years. And they knew from the first month that they started dating back in high school that they wanted to marry. And so um, they got married at 18 and she was 20 and 20 years old. Um, about six months, well, was it six months now? About four or five months ago, June 1st, they got married. So that was Isabel's first big family function. Again, just another first for Isabel to be a part of. Um, and so she did really good, she did really good that whole weekend. Um, it was a lot of activity. Um, and I'm so thankful for 
I think the night of the wedding, there were people, some of our good friends just took her and took care of her all night long. Um, as challenging as she is, um, they kind of knew exactly what to do with her and how to take care of her. And so we really were able to enjoy the whole weekend because I was really, I was really concerned um, because she, she had kind of gone into a regression during that time. I was really concerned if I was, if we were able to even enjoy the wedding and enjoy visiting with everyone and being a part of everything because we knew that we were going to need to tend to Isabel, which is totally fine because that's what you do. You do what you need to do for your kids and you just make it work. Um, but thankful that our friend stepped in and really helped with Isabel all weekend long so that we could really enjoy everything um, with the weekend. The truth is, Ashley just wanted to enjoy dancing, especially with her my husband. Booty. <laughs> so upon bringing her home, like I think we've already mentioned, we knew that medical appointments needed to happen so that we could know what's going on inside her body. And so we tackled those first. Um, but we didn't feel like therapy was something that we needed to push her into very quickly. But we just needed her to be home and to be loved and to be, you know, to feel secure and to feel safe. Um, and so we did that for 14 months and she came a long way. I mean, she looks like a different baby. I took Isabel for the PT evaluation or OT evaluation just to see, um, again, because she does need all the therapies, but we weren't going to throw her into all the therapies, even right now. We want to tackle and help her overcome the struggles that are kind of like controlling her whole little life right now, which is the stimming and the hitting and not being able to self-soothe herself. So I sat for an hour and a half and I watched um, Jennifer, who owns, who owns this uh, therapy facility, and she just worked with Isabel. And I just sat on the sidelines and it was really, I don't know if humbling is the right word, but it was very eye-opening to sit back and to see that Isabel truly is struggling with a lot of sensory issues and just, just a lot of things. And to watch how she could work with Isabel um, and how Isabel would respond, it really gave me the fresh perspective that I kind of needed and to kind of like refocus my brain and even my heart to see that Isabel's just struggling. She doesn't know, she doesn't know how to self-soothe. She doesn't know how to overcome these struggles and I've got to get over myself and help her do that. And that means that I've got to be okay with allowing these professionals to teach me, which I'm very teachable, usually, right? I'm having a hard time teaching her, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> um, so it was actually a breath of fresh air to be able to hear from these professionals, kind of validate what we already knew, and to say, here's how we're going to tackle it. And it's going to be a long road, it's going to be a long journey, but... I am more at peace and more at calm knowing that we are being super proactive and really doing things that are going to help her be the best that she can be. So a girl reached out to me and told me about this therapy, MNRI. It's a very complex style of therapy that I will not just, uh, I won't do any justice in trying to explain to you um, all that it's about, so go Google it. <laughs> Um, but my friend also went so far as to see who in our area um, offered that style therapy. And so we found um, a therapist here in town. And we were really surprised to find somebody close. Yes. We thought we were going to have to go somewhere, you know, three or four hours away. Yeah. Yeah, because we live kind of in a small town. We found, we found the therapist. His name is Carl. And we went for an evaluation. And again, this was during the period where Isabel was really... In a terrible state this was about a month and a half ago and so I met with him and his assistant and we sat down we talked and he was like okay well tell me about Isabel and and so Carl picked her up and um, it really it really brought tears to my eyes um, at that moment to see that how much he um, he saw Isabel as a precious little creation Almost like it was his child and not as just another patient, another 11 o'clock appointment. And so we went upstairs and he evaluated and worked with Isabel for, I think, about an hour and a half or two hours. And I just sat down with him. And um, throughout all of this, Isabel was screaming the whole time. Uh, but got to the point where he would start working with her um, because of the pressure that she seeks out with hitting and grinding her teeth and 
and biting her lips, he started doing some of these techniques because what this MNRI therapy um, is targeted towards people who have gone through trauma. Um, and it's just really retraining your whole reflex system. Um, it's pretty interesting and it's really retraining your brain. Her brain is in such a protective state um, and it's really not working functionally. It's not working normal. It's not working as God intended it to, our brains to work because of the conditions and what she lived through and the trauma, her brain is really responding to life in a negative way. And so that is what this therapy is going to help do is retrain that brain. So as Carl was working with her, Isabel, I, I would say probably a good 45 minutes into this, into the evaluation, Isabel finally gave him a giggle and a laugh. And Carl just sat there and he looked at her and he said, oh my Isabel. He was like, do you know how much that blesses my soul to hear you laugh? And I just started boo-hooing because like you've heard us say several times, her laughter, all these little things that she does brings us such great joy because we know what she's come from. We know how hard she's had to fight to get to where she is now. Not like that carpet. <laughs> we'll get it down. I hate to not get it. <laughs> hollering her name and getting high-pitched sounds, she gets really excited, and so uh, I'm, I'm going to do it for y'all. Just ignore my voice, but it's so cute, and it's just exciting to see that she's starting to respond more and more. So here we go. Nobody wants their kid to come into the world with uh, special needs or, or either with terminal illnesses. But you know what? If, if we had to do it all over again, and I'll say this, even if, if she dies, I'd still choose her. Mm -hmm. And uh, because all you got to do is be with her for one day. And she's really special. Uh, she lights up your life, even though she has all of these uh, medical concerns and issues. So, we're going to end right there. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to our channel. We're going to start making more videos. Um, hopefully. And they won't be as long as this one. And they'll be more, you know, of her because she's the prettier one. But, subscribe to our channel. Uh, and below, if you haven't already seen Isabel's uh, initial adoption video, I'll put a link there where everybody can see it. So, Stay tuned. We'll come out with more videos soon. Bye. Bye.